Hello everybody, I thought it would be interesting to try to do a little tutorial over YouTube on a particular subject that several people are still a bit confused about. It is what is PKI or public key infrastructure about. So this is all about the security that's embedded in all you could say your online transactions if you order books online, that kind of uh, stuff. How is your identity and your messages, how are they protected? Well, it uses a technology called PKI. Well, um, let's see if I can explain this in less than 11 minutes in a light but not too light way what it's about. First let's see a bit in history here. Um, before we had key, uh, PKI we had what we called symmetric algorithms. What do we mean? Well we had actually in the old days there were algorithms that when you uh, encrypted a message or you decrypt a message you use the same key. What is a key? In this case, in my example here is a number 2. It's a string of characters. You can apply it to a message to get an encrypted message and if you apply it again you get the original message again. And what I use here as an example is Julius Caesar who sends a message to Cleopatra, the, his, uh, his lover back then, uh, the Egyptian queen. Actually, because this is Caesar algorithm, what I want to say. So he wants to send an encrypted message. Look here, uh, an envelope with a little padlock. Well, <coughs> what was Julius Caesar's algorithm? And it is really called that way. Actually, you in essence, you see there the key is 2. In this case, it means that replace every letter of the alphabet with the letter 2 places further down the line. And of course, with the Z, you, come, you begin at the beginning again. So, if the letter would begin with hello Clio, uh, you see here below what would be the outcome the encrypted outcome and Clio knowing that the encryption key was 2 she could simply go two letters back and find the original message. Now this seems awfully trivial for our uh, modern times yes of course it is but back then against let's say the barbarian hordes this was effective enough as an algorithm. Now of course this is something with algorithms in general they evolve um, so that, um, that they always are difficult to, to uh, crack. Here the focus of my message is, this is a symmetric algorithm, you use the same key to, to encrypt or decrypt. Now, <coughs> what is the big issue with symmetric algorithms? Well, in this case it's trivial, eh? but in fact symmetric algorithms can work very well. They can be extremely difficult to break. Uh, and the issue is actually, how do you get the secret key to, how the Caesar gets it to Cleopatra in a safe way? Because if there is a third party here intercepting that secret key, then everything collapses. That is the one issue with, uh, with symmetric keys, how to get the key across in a safe way that it's not intercepted. And that is exactly... <coughs> Why asymmetric algorithms were invented, where actually the sender and the receiver use two different keys. And that is uh, the mathematical background with that has to do with big prime numbers that you multiply. We don't focus on that, that's not important here. But the interesting thing is that Bob wants to send an encrypted message to Alice, and only Alice should be able to read it. And the trick is that there are two different keys. One that Everybody can use for encryption. So let's say here that there is a central box where you have open padlocks and those are Alice's public keys because everybody can have them. The only thing that you can do with that padlock is close it. You cannot do anything else. So there is no risk that anybody has it. So actually Bob White is letter. He takes a pa Alice's padlock from the box and he closes the letter. It's encrypted. When it comes at Alice's place, well, Alice has what we call her private key. As in, eh, she keeps it privately for herself. And with that, that fits the padlock. So she can open the padlock again and you have the letter again. That is the whole idea of uh, public and private keys. One key that everybody can have and one key that you should keep for yourself. So... <coughs> This seems quite elegant. By the way, here I have the, sec the box in the middle with the public keys. It can also be that Alice sends to Bob 
an open padlock. That's another possibility. And in fact, when you browse to a website, let's say that you're going to buy a book on Amazon, and you, the moment that you become, uh, it becomes security sensitive, that you need to enter credit card details and so on, then in essence, simplified, you could say that all is uh, being Amazon then sends you an open padlock. However, this is still not good enough. Um, what is still the issue? It seems quite reasonable, and uh, I, I think I explained it in a simple way. The issue is how are you certain that this is indeed Alice's padlock? Perhaps there is here a third person called um, Frank who impersonates as Alice and he puts. Um, a padlock, an open padlock centrally, or he gives it in some way to Bob, saying this is Alice's padlock, but it's not, it's Frank. So that is a real issue. So how, and uh, of course Bob would think it's, it's, uh, he sends an encrypted message that only Alice can read, but actually it's Frank's padlock. So how do we solve that? Well, that is why these public keys in practice are certified. So, what do I mean here? Well, actually, there is a certificate authority, let's call that CA. It's in practice, well, there is software, but there's also humans who do it right, who will look at that padlock. It says Alice has padlock. They look at that padlock, and Alice, depending on the security level, will have to prove that she is she. She will have to, for example, show her ID card, uh, passport, driver's license, you know, that kind of stuff. Based on that, based on their thorough procedures, the certificate authority will say, okay, this is indeed Alice's padlock. They will certify it. And I draw here a little kind of an old kind of certificate, you know, with uh, red wax and, uh, and a few banners. That is actually that symbol for a certificate. So what is actually a certificate? It's a certified public key. Now, one thing, my dear audience, that you have to keep in mind, certification is the Achilles heel of PKI because <coughs> that is where human procedures come in there are free certificate servers on internet you can send them a public key they don't do anything they're certified it doesn't mean anything at all it only means something if the CA the certificate authority does really a very thorough job to check if the identity in this case Alice corresponds to the public key otherwise everything collapses actually this is really the Achilles heel of PKI and the have been uh, some problems where so-called, uh, I, I won't name names, but popular certificate authorities on internet didn't do a proper check if a public key indeed corresponded to an identity. That is really important. So, but that is the whole issue, uh, the whole concept of PKI. So, if you are Bob, you order a book from Amazon. I give you just that example. Most likely, your uh, so you get a public key. Actually, your public key doesn't come back from a central box, but the Amazon web server would send back that public key for your further encryption. It is actually then also certified by an internet certificate authority. Most likely, a company like Verisign will do this kind of thing uh, on internet. They, are, they have different qualities of certification, depending, well, in essence, how much that the customer pays, but depending uh, on that level, uh, they do more and more checks in the identity to be certain that the public key corresponds to an identity. So, well, I hope this was uh, in 10 minutes the essence of. PKI, uh, beginning with uh, symmetric algorithms, then we go to the asymmetric algorithms, what you do with un one key encryption, you undo with the other one, uh, decryption, and I illustrate that with open padlocks and a key. The issue is certification, how are you certain that the public key belongs to an identity, for that you have certificate authorities that must do this right, have strong procedures. Well, short, and I hope this was interesting for you. Thank you.